My name is Victoria Yan from ASAP Bio, and uh, welcome to the final presentations of the ASAP Bio preprint sprint. So our aim for the print today, uh, for the sprint today, is to highlight and support the efforts that are incentivizing much-needed preprint peer review and curation. So uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So uh, today we would like to pick up from the momentum generated from the kickoff meeting we had three weeks ago. We were amazed by the number of new uh, preprint review efforts that have joined the sprint. And during the kickoff, we were super happy to see that projects are aligning their proposals, incorporating feedback. So you can see the updated proposals on ASAP BIOS preprint, uh, preprint sprint page. Now today we're going to learn about the proposal development in more detail and how we can continue to support your work. So that's the goal for today's presentations. Uh, we also want to uh, take the time to uh, raise awareness and also uh, recognize outstanding proposals with prizes. So next slide, please. Yeah, so today's awards will be decided by three independent judges and they are Dr. Carol J. Lee from University of Washington, uh, Dr. Christian gonzalez Bio from University of Chile, as well as Dr. Sandra Ibarra Frankel from Columbia University. So they will be deciding on the prizes, uh, which are best in show, increasing representation, promoting constructiveness and project development during the sprint. And all participants that are joining today will have an opportunity to vote for their favorite projects at the end of the presentation. Next slide, please, Jessica. So how the sprint today will run is that the first hour we will have presentations and the time limit is two minutes and 50 seconds per presentation. I will be keeping time with an audible timer and Jessica here uh, will be running the slide deck. So if you are presenting, you would like to advance the slide deck, please signal for slide change. There may be a slight delay as we experienced from last time. So the presentations will be recorded for posting on YouTube. And uh, so the breakout sessions that we have later will not be. Uh, when you're not presenting, please mute yourself. And if you have technical issues for your presentations and that's a direct message, we can move your presentations near the end while troubleshooting. So something that's a little bit different today with the breakout session is that after the presentation, we will have to uh, more topic based presentations during the judges deliberation. So these are the four topics that we have um, designed. So we have also a, a collaborative note taking document and that's now shared in so a link to that is shared now in the chat. So it's a tiny URL preprints sprint notes. And uh, uh, next slide, please, Jessica. Uh, so some requests from us today. Uh, as always, please mute your mics uh, to reduce background noise. Uh, we may take the action to mute everyone. So we ex expect all participants today to adhere to ASAP IO's code of conduct and community guidelines. So just specifically um, be respectful, use collegial, professional, and inclusive language, value and respect different perspectives and experiences, include constructive feedback, and please encourage diversity. If you would like to share information and resources that are relevant to the main goal of today's sprint, which is to encourage broader, um, which is to encourage feedback and curation of preprints. So um, without further ado, let's jump into the first presentation. So, okay, so first we have Joy Owango from Africa Archive. Thank you so much. So um, my presentation is on building capacity for preprint-based peer review and curation in Africa. Um, TCC Africa and Africa Archive have been uh, working together closely since 2018 when it was official when it, or, it, or, it was officially created in in the region. And to begin with, um, in 2018 when T uh, when uh, Africa Archive was created, the first thing they needed to do was support in increasing the visibility of research output coming out of the continent. And through this, they created partnerships in, in collaboration with Zenodo, PubPub, Big Share, Science Open, and OSF. And then uh, what they're trying to do is they're the first and only Pan-African cross-disciplinary preprint platform in Africa, currently working with five uh, repository partners that I've just named. And to date, we've received over 250 accepted submissions from across the continent and accepting submissions in African languages. And we are trying to foster preprint-based open peer review and networking and building capacity in digital and science communication flow in Africa. As a center, we've been in, we've been in existence for the last 15 years. We're in partnership with the University of Nairobi, the leading university in Eastern Africa. We work in over 39 countries with over eight institutions and supported over 6,600 researchers in the region in supporting them in scholarly and science communication. Uh, next slide, please. Um, 
what we are trying to do, next slide, please, Jessica. What we are trying to do as a partner is um, utilizing best practices and various technologies and approaches for peer review and community building across Africa and designing an Africa-centric peer review approach to establish workflows that are adopted to the African context, both culturally, culturally and, tech, and technically. And the, the logos you're seeing to the left, to the right of your screen are the partners we are working with uh, in this process of, the, of creating an Africa-centric peer review approach and uh, bringing African stakeholders together to implement trainings, mentoring, and peer review community building. And the logos you're seeing at the bottom are the, the various partners we are working in the region, working with in the region in community building and mentorship when it comes to peer review. Next slide, please. So what we've, what we've managed to do to date is um, the project update since we last had the, pre, uh, the, the, sprint, the sprint print uh, was, uh, is that we've, we've created partnerships with IDA Africa in developing a journal club and peer review program uh, with, with this particular organization, IDA Africa. Then we've created a strategic partnership with the Confederation of Open Access Repositories, being a, a repository Platform, uh, platform and publishing pl platform it's, uh, uh, itself, and working towards incentivized peer review in collaboration with decentralized science. Also, we are preparing a partnership with pre-review for capacity building and mentoring, and uh, preparing for partnership with Site, which is a Twitter-based preprint commenting and pe uh, peer review community building uh, uh, commu uh, platform. So we've been doing this since the, the last preprint, uh, sprint, sprint print uh, event that we, that we took part in in November. Next slide. So what is our outlook? Um, our outlook is that after the first ASAP Bio Sprint, we, we've had quite a number of, uh, of uh, colleagues who took part in that, in, that, in that sprint, reaching out to us, looking at other ways in which we can network and collaborate, and we are following up on them. And many of the initiatives that are presented that within the, the ASAP Bio Sprint is very relevant to what we are doing, especially uh, the, the kind of work in contextualizing it to an African uh, setting. So we are very keen to work with them. And also beyond that, we are in, we've been in touch with some of them. We, we will definitely be in touch with them over the next couple of months to explore further collaborations and opportunities and to build more, um, more, more partnerships. And the kind of partnerships we are trying to build with, this uh, with these organizations that have reached out to us from the ASAP Bioprint is through fostering platform interoperability and multilingualism for peer review tools and services. So we are looking forward to working with them and seeing how best we can collaborate in the region. Thank you so much for listening to me. Hey, thank you so much, jo Joy. So next we have uh, IOD Academy from Micah Altman and Philip Cohen. Excellent, thank you very much. Um, we really appreciated the opportunity to uh, present uh, the opening meeting and we decided after seeing that discussion and getting the feedback um, that we got there that the best use of our time in this sprint would be to develop the white paper we were uh, started on um, to put uh, innovation in peer review generally in the context of um, uh, what what what's not working about peer review generally and try to um, put put forward a framework for how to um, develop peer review innovations and use the iota project as as an exemplar um, if we uh, can take that um, be so bold so to speak so the iota um uh, IDEA is a token matching service where people who want to do uh, peer reviews submit uh, tokens which pledge them to do a review. Um, the tokens can be aggregated and then um, dispensed to uh, innovative and open peer review projects. Um, so you're matching um, reviewers and uh, editors um, in a framework that facilitates experimentation and evaluation um, to support both reviewers who want to do a peer review for projects that align with their values and projects um, that want to um, use um, innovative um, uh, new peer review techniques. Next slide, please. Um, the uh, 
uh, our take on the overall situation with peer review is that it's market failure in the sense of a matching market. Um, so uh, the, what we need to do when we try to innovate in peer review is um, A, align incentives for reviewers and editors to get the participation up to where it needs to be. Uh, um, B, to provide transparent information for selection and evaluation, so we all know what kind of peer review we're doing. Um, C, to promote safety, uh, reduce the risks to quality, timeliness, and reputation that come from bad participation. Um, uh, to do that, we need to uh, make our peer review uh, programs um, documentable as experiments um, and uh, use them to fix the market and benefit science both. Um, and then to do that, we need to create data um, and share that data. Uh, last slide, please. Um, the, uh, the lag there, I'll just tab onto my own. Um, so in the white paper, we make the argument that to improve the incentives, we need to engage people's reciprocity um, and uh, disclose people's review efforts, pool resources to enable startup projects to get going, um, uh, establish a floor of transparency so that everybody um, has a, the same baseline to work from, uh, and then foster experiments specifically so that people can um, track and evaluate the innovations that they're doing. Our next steps are to continue revising the paper, um, to uh, seek feedback on the white paper when it's done, and then uh, get funding and endorsements and try to build this thing. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. That's perfectly on time. Uh, next, we have Infold Research from Dragan Okanovich. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. So Unfold is a community-driven publishing platform. It allows users to post several different types of content, such as articles, replication and projects, data sets, reviews, notes, annotations, and link them together, directly addressing the discoverability of items associated with a specific topic or article. We're also introducing points-based voting mechanics, where every piece of content can be upvoted or downvoted. Using votes, we can rank the content items and provide the ones with the highest quality or the ones that are overall most useful and allow them to float to the top. Over time, the ability to link the content and to rank it leads to the creation of highly curated collective knowledge repositories. We're also introducing a new metric, the reputation points. Each vote on the platform can earn or lose reputation points to the authors of the posted content. Our intention is to use the new metric instead of H index as a way, uh, next slide please. I think it, oh, thanks. Um, so our intention is to use the new metric, uh, the second slide, yeah, thanks. Uh, our intention is to use the new metric instead of H index as a way to estimate a person's total contribution to academia, the type of contributions, their quality and impact. Unlike H index, which motivates people to always keep an edge over everyone else, reputation points as a metric depend much more on the community and its response to the work uh, again, the previous slide. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, uh, just motivating much better information sharing and collaboration, uh, including things such as reporting as you go, sharing methods and data that allows more successful replication of the results, and many other things. We see this as an absolute must in order to move towards open science principles. We also propose to pay people based on the new metric. Because of our metric, the reputation points is more comprehensive and provides a better way to measure someone's activity in the community, its type, quality, and impact. Enabling people to directly make a living through their contributions provides the strongest incentive there is. While Unfold is imagined as a much bigger project with the goal of replacing H index as a primary metric in academia and disrupting the business model uh, by providing an alternative way to fund research, it's worth noting that we also address all of the problems that preprint sprint uh, event is concerned about. We improve curation uh, with the help of content linking and voting mechanics, and we provide strong incentives for the people uh, for people with a new metric and ability to get paid for their work. Uh, next slide. Uh, no major uh, changes there were uh, since the sprint kickoff, besides having a discussion and opinion exchange with the team from Crowd Peer project. The project is still early in development, uh, but it's ongoing. We're structured as an open source steward owned company, and we think it's the best way to stay true to our values and enable us to always be mission first. But as such, our pool of uh, funding opportunities is severely limited. So we're looking for help in those terms. Uh, for more information, visit our website. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dragan. Next, we have piloting peer review overlay services on a distributed network of preprint servers and repository. Uh, we have Martin Klein to present. 
Yeah, hi, I'm Martin, and together with my colleagues, Kathleen and Paul, I'm presenting the project. Uh, next slide, please. So I'd like to provide a project overview by means of describing a simple use case that is in scope for us. On this slide, on the left, you see a box representing preprint services and repository platforms. And on the right, you see a box representing uh, peer review services, and you see a whole bunch of communication uh, between them. So let's assume I just uploaded my preprint to archive.org. I work at LANL, so institutional loyalty somewhat demands that I use archive. So I'd like to request a peer review for my manuscript. The archive platform allows me to send a notification to one of the services represented on the right in order to request a peer review. The receiving service then immediately sends an acknowledgement back uh, to archive in order to convey that the request has been accepted. And once the review is done, it sends another message back to archive with the URI of the preprint and the URI of the newly created uh, review. Uh, so after these messages, archive on the one hand can convey that the preprint has been reviewed and can also include a link to the review that is hosted at the peer review service. The peer review service, on the other hand, can publish the review and include a link to the preprint hosted at archive. Next slide, please. So if you recall from our last presentation, our model really is based on the principles of the web. That means we're using stable URIs uh, um, in our messages to refer to preprints, peer reviews, authors, reviewers, and so on and so forth. We're using web standards such as linked data notifications to send our messages back and forth. And exactly because of that use of these standards, uh, our model is really platform and service agnostic. That means that uh, it works equally well regardless of whether archive, for example, is sending a message to PCI or pre-review -pre is sending a message to SAP bio. Uh, on top of that, we're building on a distributed network of independent parties as the figure in the previous slide really indicated. Next slide, please. So we were really happy to see that discussions during and also uh, after the previous session resulted in new use cases for us. We assessed the model against uh, uh, these new use cases and we're happy to recognize that it was really flexible enough to accommodate for all of them. However, these discussions and also listening to other presentations during the sprint to the last sprint uh, really reinforced our belief that it is a standards-based approach that is needed to scale across platforms and communities here. Next slide, please. So where are we now? Well, the project is shaping up nicely and we're super excited about our next steps, right? So there are uh, specifically to develop reference implementations and to do so in collaboration with existing services and platforms, some of which are presenting here today and all of which in fact have expressed interest in piloting our model. So all we really need to go forward from now on is funding, surprise, surprise. The project team is really uh, ready to go and we even have developers eager to write code. Uh, so if you're interested in our efforts, please do get in touch. Uh, we'd love your feedback. Thanks for listening. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so next we have Harnessing Cross-Institutional Journal Clubs to assess and review preprints. And we have Felix Richter. Hi, thank you. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be back again and also to give, us, give you all an update on sort of like our small uh, grassroots journal club initiative. Could you click to the next slide, please? Um, I just wanted to remind you very quickly. So this was kind of like what we've basically been presenting to you the last time. We have this cross-institutional journal club hub that uh, assesses preprints in their journal club, discusses it in a broader sort of like um, spectrum and field, and then basically highlights specific ones of them that are particularly good as upcoming trends um, in sort of like a journal format, but also having all of these reviews that are written on these preprints uh, publicly available on our website as well. Now, due to your feedback as well, we have uh, greatly, I think, been uh, improving our, our initiative. And when you click to the next um, animation, you can see, for instance, one particular aspect is the um, addition of educational aspects to our um, initiative, which we are very happy to work together with um, pre-review, who has already sort of like a pipeline on how this can work. And we're um, sort of like in the process to kind of like figure, figure out the nitty gritties to make this sort of like hopefully a stable part of our blueprint as well in order to offer sort of like to early career researchers how to critically think, but also constructively give feedback to preprints that are out there pu um, published. In the meantime, we have had our first journal club, uh, joint journal club session with more than 70 attendees, sort of like half half between Oxford and Mount Sinai. And we're really happy that actually uh, introduction of polling works really well for us um, in order to increase the participation of people. Since uh, with so many people, it's very difficult to hear everyone's opinion, but polling really helps there. And when you click once more, one more time, um, also due to your feedback, we um, actually got sort of like uh, the idea of really publicizing this blueprint of these uh, journal club hubs so that other journal club, academic journal club hubs can easily take this on and um, uh, do exactly sort of like the same stuff that we are basically doing as well and kind of like create these hubs between different institutes as well. 
And lastly, um, we want to really maybe also with the help of ASA Bio who has these connections to publishers, really help to create these new journal clubs between new institutes and maybe do some sort of like public engagement and reach out uh, type of format. When you go to our last slide, um, now, when we come to the outlook, well, we are getting just started here really in the right now. So for us, it's kind of like it's as this is a grassroots um, initiative, we really um, want to improve this concept as we go and also increase the visibility. One thing is we need to create a website, which also going to be um, probably a little bit expensive for us to do. So uh, some funds will be definitely needed for that. On the other hand, as said, we want to increase the educational value. So we will talk to our graduate student uh, directors at the different institutions as well to see how we can incorporate and use this journal club even more. And lastly, we want to increase the participation diversity, which really means to create these new hubs as well at different other university, potentially include um, one or two more in our own frame as well, if, if that's possible, but still having a manageable size in order to keep this running on a sustainable level. And when you click the last time, um, and with that, I'm going to close, I promise. Um, basically, the further support we're going to need is sort of like once, yes, a little bit of financial, which I didn't put on here particularly, but in particular, I think a lot is about the visibility of this blueprint. So it would be great for getting um, sort of like support through social media from the different initiatives from ASAP Bio, it would be great. On the other hand, uh, to reach out to the publishers and um, basically make them interested in, you know, taking this up in their journal, because it's, I think, a big incentive for journal clubs uh, to and students also to kind of like see that there's value in these reviews that they're writing and as an audience. Thank you. Thank you so much, Felix. Next, we have display evaluation history of preprints from Tomas Gilmo. Thank you very much, Victoria. So we refocused on the importance of the evaluation history of preprints. And even the title of the project has changed. It's now displaying evaluation history of preprints. And the project has been simplified and we now refocus on uh, new metadata, reference standards and a badge. So next slide, please. So this is our view uh, of the ecosystem. We have uh, preprints in various preprint servers with DOI. We have peer reviews of preprints for various uh, services of peer review also with DOI. And we have endorsement statements of preprints that come from various services uh, such as journals, prelites, PCIs, etc., etc. So if you could click, please. So these objects are all connected by metadata. The preprints has been peer reviewed by this peer review. This peer review has been, uh, is a peer review of this preprint. This preprint has been endorsed by this endorsement statement. And this endorsement statement is an endorsement of this preprint. And this endorsement is based on these peer reviews. And also we have a securitized badge that signals the evaluation history uh, of the preprints. And uh, also on the bottom of the slide, but I think that we cannot see it on the slide, it's not a problem. We also have a new standard of reference that signals also the evaluation history of the preprint, the peer reviews and the endorsement. And if you could click again, please. So these, uh, all these items, some of them uh, already exist and they are in blue and some of them uh, have to be developed and they are in red. So if you could click again, please. Um, and about these developments, we have contacted Crossref about some of the metadata and we have been contacted by Zabbio about a technical roadmap project. We have also been contacted by PubPub about a doc map and we have been contacted by Core. Uh, to be a pilot case for their model and to include core also in our use case and workflows. And we have also contacted early evidence base to include PCI in the peer review service database. And next slide, please. So this project is thought to recognize the value of peer reviews and endorsement of preprints. It is made to acknowledge the work done by reviewers and by endorsers. And it is meant to allow readers to spot clearly the evaluated preprints. So the main goal is to put the priority on the evaluated preprints compared to the published articles and not to consider so much the version of record, but the record of versions of preprints. And to achieve this, uh, we, pro we would like to promote interoperability between the services to change the culture and to promote new standards of citations to cite peer reviews and endorsement. So thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, Thomas. Next we have Take a Penny, Leave a, leave a Penny from Michelle. 
Hi, um, so my goals since the kickoff were twofold. One was to minimize the scope of the project to focus on uh, demonstrating a proof of concept for a very simple hypothesis, namely that people will perform reviews on preprints through mechanisms that already exist um, if it's presented and expected as a sort of in-kind transaction at the point of their own preprint submission. Um, and the second goal was just to add some concreteness to what started out as a relatively abstract idea. So you can click. Um, on its face, this proposal is extremely simple. Request that preprint authors complete reviews on preprints and make it easy for them to do so. Um, but how we implement that needs to be seamless and intuitive um, in order to serve as an effective test. So for the purpose of designing a pilot um, that is technically feasible within a short time frame and also affordable to implement, we dropped the status as credit portion of the proposal that was originally part of it. We don't need this for a proof of concept. After all, peer review has functioned without a tangible um, incentives for a very long time. So this isn't a critical component for demonstrating a proof of concept here. Um, in fact, for this proposal, it is important to validate that there's an appetite for preprint review in the absence of such incentives. And so after all, you're not supposed to change more than one variable, right? So. Uh, we do hope that the world is ready to see some concept of recognition and remuneration for review. So I'd hope that that would be a future development of this idea um, that would involve credit. Um, so during my breakout session, Damien mentioned that the reviewer matching technology used by eLife Peer Scout is open source. Uh, I talked to him a bit more about it later. It should be feasible to leverage this tool to query the database of preprints that need reviews um, on the basis of keywords derived from the uploaded preprint. The app would output a list of suitable preprints on pre-review and the user would be able to click on one to complete. Um, Research Square is also discussing an API integration with pre-review that would allow for full or rapid review of uh, preprints on our platform. This already exists for BioArchive, bio MedArchive, I believe. Um, so pre-review's upcoming platform for author-driven review requests would make the pre-review platform suitable aggregator for preprints in need of review, which is a critical piece of this project. You can go to the next slide. The next steps are just to actually build these individual pieces to create the workflow. I mentioned we're already talk, we're already well on our way with pre-review, um, but the work needs to be scoped and performed on that critical upstream piece where we use Peer Scout to match uh, pa match pre preprints to the preprint that was uploaded. Um, so that's it for me. Okay, thank you very, very much, Michelle. Next, we have uh, Samantha Hendel to present Transforming Peer Review Through Mentorship and Community Engagement. Thank you, Victoria. Okay, so this sprint has provided a fantastic opportunity for us all to hear each other's needs and values, what barriers exist, and how we might break them down. We heard you all say that there is a need to filter through the mass of preprints and triage those that are worth further attention. We heard loud and clear that the current peer review system is flawed and in need of creative solutions. We heard that there are a lot of challenges that we need to overcome, such as the question of whether reviews should be anonymous or signed and the possible impact of such decisions. And also how we can engage and train new reviewers in a way that can increase global participation and inclusivity. But can this be solved through tech development and innovative metrics alone? We would argue no. During and after the sprint, we've had feedback that we are bridging the gap between both the technical and social influences that are needed for impactful change, both in our platform and in our programs. For example, our platform enables reviewers to provide short, rapid reviews with aggregated visualizations that can help triage preprints for further peer review. Our platform also addresses the issue of anonymity by allowing reviewers to choose either a public profile or remain anonymous while still providing a means for anonymous reviewers to share their reviewing profile uh, with selected peer, uh, peers. This together with our open reviewers training program and live stream preprint journal club facilitation helps to support and empower a career stage agnostic, geographically and racially diverse pool of constructive peer reviewers. As we have been thinking about the requirement for both technical and community infrastructure, we were excited to hear that others are thinking along the same lines. And this reinforced what we were already thinking and working towards. This sprint has helped us find more collaborators and blossom partnerships that we had already formed. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, it was heartwarming to see so many people who were interested in working with us, including the, those shown here. And their interests ranged from the use of our expertise and open resources to support individual communities, 
and models of peer review through to collaborations to support our tech developments. For example, we are excited about collaborating with the Training Center in Communication, TCC, and Africa Archive to remix and adapt our open reviewers resources and cohort training framework to train African peer reviewers. We learned that TCC has 200 budding reviewers ready to learn how to uh, peer review manuscripts, and we are keen to help them in a way that works for them. We are also planning to work with the groups at Mount Sinai and the University of Oxford to adapt our peer reviewing training uh, to their needs. Uh, next slide, please. We are committed to strengthening these partnerships as a way to create a future of a scholarship that is equitable and transcends the one solution fits all model, which we know doesn't work. To do that, we need investment for us to be here for the long haul so that we can support others and make significant changes to the peer review ecosystem. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Samantha. Next, we have Tomas Lemberger presenting early evidence base. Okay, thank you, Victoria. Yeah, uh, thank you for giving us a second chance to present. So I want to present the early evidence base, uh, which is a platform we are building at EMBO to aggregate and mine preprints and uh, their reviews. And in response to the great feedback we, we received from the previous round, we have decided to fuse our two previous pre presentations into a single integrated uh, project. So I think in this group, we're all convinced about the, the benefits of preprint, but it's also important to remain aware of some of the key issues uh, that remain to be addressed. Next uh, slide, please. Um, I think the, 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 pre the preprints are, um, um, they, they still uh, represent a, a, a rather small fraction of, of the literature, while the volume is um, is increasing, which is extremely encouraging. It makes it also more difficult to to browse and to find them. And now, experience many authors are still reluctant to post their best work as preprint, and even more so to post the reviews uh, online. Now, from the side of the review, uh, the readers, the referred preprints are uh, a little bit hard to find and dispersed, and and reviewers, they are just uh, very busy, and and they also need uh, quite a bit of of convincing. Ne next slide please. So what can we do? Uh, globally, I think we need to increase engagement by all stakeholders. The authors, if the authors do not post, there will be nothing to review, nothing to read, and we can stop uh, talking essentially. Um, the readers, of course, uh, the readers, uh, they need to read the, the preprints, they need to use them, and if refereed preprints are not visible and read, uh, authors will also not be motivated to, to post them. And finally, the reviewers, they will only engage if they feel that their work uh, and the many hours that they need to review uh, one paper is worthwhile the effort. So to achieve greater engagement, we need to increase the visibility of refereed preprints, the utility as research tools, and build trust really of the community around the process of posting, reviewing, and finding refereed preprints. Next slide. Yeah, the next one, if you can. Thank you. Um, so many services and, and many are, are, are here today are emerging to that produce a referee preprint, the previous one, um, to and to make uh, them easier to, to access and discover. We are therefore aggregating the content of a number of these services. And you heard already from Thomas that we're in the process of integrating PCI and, and many others as well. Uh, now you can go to the next one. Um, now, refereed preprints are very interesting for readers um, because the reviews are, are, are very deep and, and rich resources. So reviewer, reviews are not anymore just for the authors or for the, for the editors, they're also for the readers. And in early evidence base, we are working to expose the reviews in a very visible way and extract some of the features to the readers to entice them to read the, the, the reviews and of course, to read the preprint. These features include the provenance of the reviews, summaries that can pop to attract attention and, and other more advanced features we are working on. Next slide. Now, to, to improve further the, the findability of refereed preprints, uh, we are using artificial intelligence to mine the scientific content um, of the papers, and, and we use an engine that we trained on manually curated figure legends from the source data uh, compendium, which is another project we are running at Tebo. And this allows us to build a large knowledge graph that is tightly linked to scientific evidence. And this knowledge graph can then be used, processed, uh, to organize in an automated and unsupervised way the papers around topics that are self-organized. And you can see on the right uh, uh, side that 
these emerging uh, topics uh, contain emerging fields, uh, such as COVID-19, that are identified automatically as co coherent topic, uh, but also the key biological entities that are involved in this process. So to conclude, next slide, uh, with early evidence base, we really try to promote refereed reports as rich resources uh, for the readers. And uh, next slide, yes. Uh, and with uh, unsupervised automated methods, we can start to implement machine curation uh, of preprint at scale. And we think this is a very powerful way uh, to combine human expertise with artificial intelligence uh, that will transform uh, the preprints in tools for, for open science. And last but not, uh, not least, we will launch officially the platform before uh, Christmas to put under the Christmas tree. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you very much, Tomas. Next, we have Gavin McStay to present Biomed News. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Gavin. I'm the director of Biomed News. And so I will just tell you a few updates since the last uh, um, uh, we last met. So um, if you could move on to the next slide, please, Jessica. So um, just to remind you, um, Biomed News is a machine learning based platform to rank PubMed abstracts that topic experts can use. Uh, to disseminate research or papers they find um, interesting and they want to share with their networks. So this provides a, um, a kind of a straightforward way to see um, each week papers on the topic of um, interest through uh, phrases and text uh, uh, based machine learning. So since um, we last met um, through some discussions between myself and Thomas and uh, thoughts we had after our breakout sessions, um, we thought we, we've had the idea for a while, maybe that um, Biomed News could be used to um, uh, as, a, as a kind of like a duplicate checker for looking at when a preprint is originally uh, released or becomes available, as well as the postprint version of this. So, over time, um, as as the uh, as these um, publications become available, then the you can see where the original source was if it was not immediately obvious. And then through discussions in our breakout sessions, uh, we, there were two suggestions that came up that were kind of mo uh, most interesting to us, that, that we, um, with the related reports through the number of um, selectors that we currently have, we could identify um, using commonly selected papers, those that have more, uh, I guess, more, uh, um, sorry, more, um, uh, 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 Sorry, stuck. <laughs> I've been I've been recommended by more than one person uh, in a report, and so if, if if these are aggregated together, we could kind of uh, get a metadata analysis of these reports. And so if this could be implemented for preprints as well, it could um, uh, help to make uh, certain preprints more visible. And then um, also there were suggestions of using uh, uh, alternative sources for preprints, uh, such as cross cross. Um, at the moment, there is some some availability on PubMed, and we we favour this because it's a more focused source on the biomedical um, research topic that we we kind of uh, focusing on. Um, and on the next slide, on my final slide, um, uh, just uh, how our project is developing and how you could maybe help. Um, we've we found since the, the the few years that we've been around. But it's, it's been a slow growth process trying to um, uh, get people on board to use it and tr uh, kind of see the benefits of it, it takes some some time they, they the initial benefits are not usually noted until um, a few weeks down the line once the machine learning has been um, uh, kind of really kicked in um, and also uh, we need to be able to spread the word more readily um, the more people we have using it the more people uh, can tell us how it can be improved so um, uh, thank you for my, the time. I think I think I've been there. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Gavin. Next we have Boris Barber uh, representing periodicals. Okay, thanks for having me back. So you can go straight to the next slide. Uh, so in fact, the big event since we last spoke is the publication of Michael Eisen's uh, editorial in eLife on implementing a publish then review model of publishing. And uh, there's a key quote in there for his long-term vision, which is, uh, there is no reason for papers to be reviewed only once or by only one entity. The review process should involve multiple voices and go on for as long as the work is relevant. 
Now, when we read that on Tuesday, we jumped in our time machine, set it to minus four years, and implemented that technology, which is uh, and has been available for a few years now, as periodicals. Uh, so I'll just remind you, it's a pretty flexible platform for sharing, discovering, curating publications, including preprints, but not only preprints and the use cases range from the personal reading list to quite elaborate overlay journals with editorial boards and review solicitation should all be possible. So if you wanna try out Michael Eisen's long-term vision, then you can do it now. Uh, but in a way that kind of uh, reiterates the point that has already been made that we made previously that the problem isn't really technological but is social, cultural, and it may well be that if Michael can carry with him his stable, his editorial stable of uh, Max Planck, Howard Hughes and welcome investigators, they may well shift opinion and we can look forward to that. Anyway, so that we made a couple of contacts and I've noted down a couple more since the last meeting. We had some discussions, nothing has been implemented, particularly next slide. The one thing that um, we have resolved, however, which we think will be useful for everybody is actually not a change directly in periodicals, but to the kind of backend pub peer database, which is then exposed to quite a few users through the plugins and extensions we have for browsers and Zotero, the reference manager. And what we want to do is to link final publications back to preprints that have any kind of commentary. So on pub peer, on bioarchive, on medarchive, on any of your other projects, uh, we'd also be happy to link to them. And that would be a way of giving uh, much more durability to what otherwise would be quite ephemeral work in curating preprints, but that most journals will not link back to. Uh, so we would offer a way of linking back to that information because it's always gonna be useful. And if there's a message, it's one that our problem, everybody's problem is engagement. So run, publicize, follow a periodical. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next we have uh, Daniela Sadiri uh, presenting COVID-19 Rapid Review, a joint initiative to engage the community on the review of COVID-19 preprints. It's a long title. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sabayo and uh, the funders for organizing this and having us. Uh, in May 2020, a group of scientific, technological and medical publishing organization including peer review, I made a direct call to the whole community to maximize the efficiency of peer review of COVID-19 research. And the amazing thing is that community responded very quickly with over 1,700 researchers who signed up to this rapid reviewer pool. And one goal of this initiative is specific to preprints. And what we aim to do is to engage this group of volunteer reviewers in the review of COVID-19 preprints and enable the usage of these reviews to speed up the publication of important research. Next slide, please. Um, since uh, to this end, um, we have been leveraging the functionalities of the open platform Outbreak Science Rapid Peer Review to host the reviews and to start thinking about what conditions that we need to implement to integrate community reviews of preprints which are not organized peer review process. And as an initial proof of concept, uh, we, our team developed a COVID-19 dashboard, as uh, you can see from the screenshot, uh, which is a page um, in which editors and other readers can search for COVID-19 preprints that have been uh, re already reviewed or that have requests for reviews by other community members. They can filter for those who have been signaled to have data, code, uh, or those who have been recommended for peer review, and they can browse through the most recent activity and the active reviewers. Uh, but this is just a proof, initial proof of concept, and we know that what we need is to better understand what are the needs of the people we're trying to um, change the behavior uh, for, and so editors and community reviewers. Next slide, please. Since the kickoff, we distributed, uh, we designed and distributed a survey um, among the editors of the initiative, and we began to learn that in order for them to consider these reviews, they would need to know the identity of the reviewers, perhaps this is not surprising, and more details on their expertise. 
We would also need to, um, uh, in order for editors uh, to be more likely to use the community preprint reviews, we would need for them to access them easily um, and uh, while they're handling those manuscripts. So a way to match those manuscripts with the reviews. In other words, we need to build trust and we need to make it simple to, to connect the editors and the reviewers. Thanks to the sprint, we strengthen collaboration with groups and organizations with whom we'll develop functionalities according to the latest standards. So thank you, CORE. Integrate with third party sites to close the loop between authors and reviewers and implement community engagement strategy that includes journal clubs and MP review training. Next slide, please. In order to do that, we need partnerships with like-minded organizations to help back engage a broader research community, test ideas and protocols. We need endorsements by organizations, publishers and academics to help spread the word and, give, uh, and get involved in initiative. And last but not least, we do need funding to support the work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Daniela. Next, we have encouraging preprint review, making it easier to create reviews, make it easier to incorporate reviews uh, from Stensella, and we have Alexander presenting. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me here. Um, just to contextualize things, uh, Stensella is an open source platform for authoring, collaborating, and publishing executable documents. And uh, as part of the, the sprint, uh, we thought we would focus on the encouraging reviews aspects. So I created a little uh, screen recording demonstrating what we managed to build during this sprint. So uh, next slide, please. As part of the ASAP Bio preprint sprint, we wanted to introduce reviews as a new feature to Stencilla. The differentiating factor for us is that the reviews live alongside the documents that they are reviewing. For example, as a GitHub pull request, they can be left as comments, or inside a Google Doc, you can use a native commenting functionality to leave feedback. The author of the document can even respond to the feedback. And then these comments can be imported into the project as a review. I've already linked my demo manuscript to the project. And I'll go to the new reviews tab here and request a new review. We can do this in two ways. We can email someone and request them to review our project or we can take existing comments and import them as a review, which is what I'll do. I will choose the document that I want to import and I'll begin the process. To finish the import process, we need to select the name of the person whose review we want to import, in this case, Nikomi Bentley. And then we can also assign those comments to a user on Stencil Hub. This way, their avatar and any other information that is on the platform can be linked to the review. Now I just click on the import review button and we should see the review comments from the document. And now the review has been imported into Stencilla. You can see that the review summary, as well as the individual comments and the response I may have left to Nikomi's feedback can be seen here. If we wanted to take this a step further, we can even register a DOI for the review so that it can be cited in other articles and manuscripts. Next slide, please. So uh, in summary, we managed to build uh, support for reviews in Google Docs and GitHub, managing to mint DOIs, and we started a few other collaborations with some of the other projects as well. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the biggest thing that we need right now is people to sign up to the platform and test it and give us feedback, especially around the user workflows for some of the, these functionalities. And um, the things we built are in uh, private beta, but uh, they're on the platform, so thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We have a uh, uh, crowd peer presented by Lewis Fisher. Hi, everyone. Um, so to give you a quick reminder, uh, just on the next slide, please. Uh, Crowdflare is a platform for the open review of preprints. It allows you to leave comments on specific aspects of a preprint. And then a voting system is available for the community to decide what comments are most informative. And then built on top of this voting system, reviewers can build a reputation. We wanted to take this as an opportunity to discuss a few things in more depth based on some of the conversations we've had since the first session. 
So firstly, the platform is designed so that each comment represents a single actionable piece of information. This makes the upvoting much more valuable because only the important elements rise to the top. This is also based on the fact that not every reviewer will be comfortable reviewing every aspect of the preprint. Secondly, we wanted to expand on the voting system and what it means. Uh, there's some concern that voting could produce a negative environment, uh, so here's how we expect it to be used. An upvote is used to signal your agreement with someone's comments, something that you think the rest of the community should see. A uh, downvote is used to signal disagreement. This is a comment that you believe hinders the progress of the review. Separate to this, we have a flagging mechanism where you can add flags to comments as being inappropriate or offensive in line with our code of conduct. Votes on your comment replies give you a score of plus five. And then on the flip side, if your comment is downvoted, you get a score of minus two. And if your reply is downvoted, you get a score of minus one. And the differences in these scores aims to foster an environment where reviewers are not afraid of being downvoted. So this gives you a single score, but we wanted to expand on this by building up individual reviewer profiles. And this is where having individual comments is useful. Behind the scenes, we're working on topic modeling and method extraction from individual preprints so that we know what each preprint is about. We can then begin to link um, comments to topics and provide fine grained feedback on areas of research where your comments are valued most, as well as making individual comments more searchable. Uh, next slide, please. So, what is the outlook of the project? Uh, we currently have the backbone of the platform ready and are just padding out some of the, the functionality. So at this stage, what we really like is some user feedback. Uh, one of the things we noticed, especially in this community, is the interest around preprint journal clubs. Um, so we've rethought how we can use the platform to run journal clubs, and we'll be launching a new portal for this soon. Uh, here, you'll be able to set up and join existing journal clubs and invite other members to join. And discussions can be public or private, but after the session is finished, these discussions will be made available on the public platform for others to engage with. Um, so if this is something you want to get involved with or have any feedback on, please do get in touch. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Louis. Uh, next, we actually have a merger of two projects, and we have a joint effort from life science editors and uh, Joseph Wade presenting putting peers at the heart of peer review. Oh. Thank you. Um, so we're proposing then a high quality peer to peer preprint -re review service process. Um, and the first thing to say is that uh, the first new thing compared to the last meeting is that life science editors and Joseph Wade uh, are now collaborating because we proposed very similar processes uh, at the last time. And um, this was supposed to fade in, but now you see that Joe has actually already implemented his process for one of his papers on, um, on BioArchive where he's already reviewed it. Okay, next slide, please. So who are the peers then at the heart of this process? Well, they're all scientists, of course. Who are the authors, the liaison team, and the reviewer teams for a single preprint? Next slide, please. The authors then, at the moment when they submit their preprint to the server, would request either a formal peer review process, as they would get if they submitted to a journal, or, and this is new that we've introduced since the last meeting, uh, they could also uh, request a more informal feedback on perhaps only one aspect of the preprint that would contribute to uh, improving work in progress. The other thing they would do at the time of submission is they would nominate uh, several potential liaison teams. Next slide, please. The liaison team then is a bit like the handling editor in a journal. Uh, they would be uh, composed of a principal investigator and one or several colleagues. They'd be responsible for overseeing the review process, inviting appropriate reviewers, posting the reviews on the server, and then finally writing a peer review summary of the whole process. Next slide, please. So we see two important strengths of this liaison team idea. First, it guarantees the quality of the, uh, of the peer review. 
The liaison team would be responsible for ensuring that all the technical and the theoretical aspects of the preprint are evaluated by appropriate experts. And they would also ensure that the reviews that are received are thorough and fair. The second important strength we see in this liaison team is that it would be accountable. The team would be named aimed on the published reviews and on the pre, uh, pre reviewed preprint and this we believe would prevent gaming of the system uh, which was one of the things that was raised first time around um, uh, as a possible problem with uh, the process. Next slide please. The reviewer teams then uh, in a similar way would be composed of a principal investigator and one or more colleagues. There'd be several reviewer teams for each preprint of course. And this team would then, the teams would then write a structured review and we would provide a template which would uh, request similar sorts of structure and information, which would make the review easier to navigate for somebody coming to read it later on. The reviewer team idea then formalizes the co-opting of students and postdocs into the review process, which is something that tends to happen nowadays anyway. Um, it would also formalize then the training of these more junior scientists in how to review and in things like implicit bias. And we would provide training materials that would help with that, uh, that uh, whole process. Moreover, um, having more uh, lab-based junior colleagues involved in the, in the peer review process would provide hands-on technical knowledge that perhaps the more office-based senior scientists uh, might lack. Next slide, please. So what do we need for this process then? Um, we first of all need uh, the support of the preprint servers and this is uh, something new that we can also report since the last meeting. We've had uh, a meeting with uh, John Inglis and Richard Seber of BioArchive and MedArchive about the whole uh, idea. And they are, are uh, very supportive of the general principles of what we're trying to do. At the same time, they're not ready at the moment to integrate peer review into uh, those servers themselves and want to prefer rather having an overlay system. Um, so they could, however, and they already do, um, identify reviewed print preprints on their servers and they make their reviews visible using this uh, hypothesis widget that allows them to display the reviews that they have already from eLife and from Review Commons. The other thing we'd like to know about, uh, like to have to make this successful would be citation of the reviewed preprints on PubMed. And finally, uh, we have a lot of uh, knowledge about how to actually implement a peer review and what makes a high quality peer review, but we have absolutely no technical know-how. We don't know how to build a, an overlay service that would integrate with, with the preprint servers. Um, so we're now looking then for collaborators who would help us to uh, build a platform in, on which we could automate uh, liaison team invitations, build in appreciation scores and so on, as we've heard already. So if anyone has any uh, suggestions for who we might look to for collaboration, we'd be very pleased to hear from you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Carol. Next, we have Emily uh, Gurley presenting the 2019 novel coronavirus research compendium in CRC. Thanks, it's great to be back with all of you again. Um, so um, as a reminder, on, on behalf of Kate Grabowski, who's my co-director, uh, the NCRC, next slide, please is really a response to the pandemic. So the problem was the rapid proliferation of literature on SARS coronavirus 2, uh, much of it that was being released in preprint and some issues with quality and how do we get those data to the front lines uh, for use quickly. So our solution was a publicly available resource to rapidly curate and review the evidence coming out. And our goal again is this data translation. So how do we get the most important cutting edge data to the front lines, clinicians, public health practitioners and policymakers. We've assembled a team of more than 60 faculty and trainees who are part of this effort. Next slide, please. And just as a reminder, here's what we do. We have, you can think of this as a pipeline. So there are custom searches of eight topic areas, all the, uh, published papers and preprints come into a custom web app application. Experts from each of the eight teams then review everything that's come in and prioritize two papers for review. 
original high quality research that really shifts our paradigm or is a must read for folks on the front lines or papers who have significant that are getting significant press regardless of the quality. Because again, we wanna help people understand what data they should be using and how and what maybe they shouldn't use. The reviews include all the major um, parts of the paper, including strengths and limitations, not just those named by the author, but considering the totality of the evidence that we have. They're then edited um, for clarity and uh, ease of communication and sort of translated and put up on our website. All of the preprints we re review are linked to preprint servers. Um, and we have a newsletter where subscribers receive updates each week on what's been uploaded. Next slide, please. So that's what's up and running and, and our challenges, I think, align with some of the uh, breakout groups and, and what you all are thinking about, even though we're a bit more narrowly focused just on pandemics or this pandemic. Uh, we're, we're, we uh, struggle a bit with reaching our target audience on the front lines. Um, our web application is still a bit slow, so we sort of built the plane as, as we were taking off and, and we need to go back and revisit and perhaps become a bit more sophisticated just because of the sheer volume of papers that are coming out. We struggle a bit with sustainability motivation. Uh, we don't have long-term funding yet identified and, and that's something that we're concerned about. But we do have some successes, so it's, we're up and running already, um, as, as you know. And based on the last round or the last meeting, we've, we're exploring collaborations with eLife and Papier. Um, and I, I really see that as two, uh, two different parts. One is making sure that our reviews are linked and visible and helpful to authors um, from a scientific perspective, but also thinking about what we're doing as a case study um, and how we get data, even from preprints into action. If the idea behind preprints is that we're getting things out there in a more timely way, then we want to think even beyond just the scientific publication itself, but use of those data. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much, Emily. And uh, I believe we have one more presentation, Jessica, if you don't mind refreshing the slide. Um, okay, yes, okay. So uh, last but not least, we have preprint review and curation by content type uh, presented by Daniel Miechen. Hello, um, next slide, please. So the basic idea uh, for my uh, project here is that uh, preprints, they come uh, in various shades and they have different components and those components, they sometimes require different kinds of review workflows. And uh, so in this slide, the, um, the bottom part is what's new. Uh, the upper part is what uh, I was presenting last time. And the reactions I got uh, from presenting this last time were uh, ranging from somewhere somebody should be doing this um, to we're doing part of it and let's coordinate. And um, since the different content types, they uh, basically exist across the entire preprint ecosystem, um, the project can in principle be integrated with any of the others. So you could imagine a um, preprint server, for instance, or, or uh, an overlay platform that specifically looks at uh, different content types, or you could imagine a journal club doing this. So I'm open to collaborations in any uh, of these directions. Next slide, please. One of these uh, collaborations has already been formed. So offer preprints, we're interested. And so we're now exploring how we can actually operationalize this. Um, I myself have actually made more conscious efforts to document uh, when I'm encountering uh, different content types uh, in preprints. And so you have here some examples of some of my tweets on such matters. And I have focused on um, code and data and ethics so far, but uh, the approach essentially works for any component of uh, preprints. Next slide, please. So what are the next steps? Um, for me, it's still important to um, focus on documenting what are the actual content types that are being shared as part of or in association with preprints. And then uh, how do the uh, preprint associated workflows differ for those content types? Like reviewing um, a piece of text or a citation is something different from reviewing, for instance, a uh, set of code uh, examples 
or equations or um, actual data. Uh, and uh, so this is still um, something I'm very interested in exploring. And uh, then how can we as a community, as a bio, continue this? Well, basically everybody who uh, is presenting here and everybody else who is engaged with preprints, they should keep in mind the different content types and then think about how uh, when they're refining or uh, further exploring or even just maintaining their preprint workflows, uh, how the different content types come into play. And uh, then uh, if any of this uh, resonates uh, or if you have ideas or, or something uh, like this problems, I would very much like to engage. And so that's it for the moment. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much. Um, so Sandra is um, going to have to leave early, so she won't be able to um, contribute to the conversation. And I just wanted to uh, say to Christian that um, you should feel free to jump in um, at any time. Um, I suppose that what, um, I don't know if you wanted to go ahead and unveil what the People's Choice Award is, uh, Jessica and yes. uh, Victoria. <laughs> yes, so um, congratulations to TFCC Africa and Africa Archive. Uh, for uh, the largest number of votes in the People's Choice Award. Oh, that's terrific. That's terrific. Great. Um, so I'll just go ahead and um, move to the next uh, category, uh, which is project development. The prize for the uh, most developed project uh, goes to early evidence base, aggregating mining and rendering for print reviews. Um, we really like how, you know, like you merged the two projects and kind of integrated all the uh, feedback and, and all the comments on the, on the last session. So congratulations. <laughs> um, Carol, do you want me to do the, the other ones or, or? Yeah, if you could, if you could do the promoting constructiveness one, I have records of the others. Okay. Apologies, so, I'm so sorry. Thank so you. for another no, worry. Uh, so for promoting uh, constructiveness, uh, the prize goes to take a penny, leave a penny. Uh, we think it's a, it's a, like it's a very like um, let's say simple in the way of implementing, but that can help a lot on 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 promoting the constructiveness of uh, of the reviews. So congratulations. <laughs> Terrific. Um, and then for increasing representation, um, we selected uh, building capacity for preprint peer review and curation in Africa. So congratulations again to that team uh, for finding ways of uh, making science um, open uh, for an entire continent that is underserved. Um, so congratulations to you. And then for best in show, um, we've chosen transforming peer review through mentorship and community engagement. Um, it, this is a wonderful project um, that finds ways of creating communities and mentoring people um, to review preprints um, in ways that build uh, inclusivity uh, sort of within the foundation of how it's structured. Uh, so congratulations to, to you. Fabulous, thank you so much uh, to our uh, judges for their thoughtful deliberations. Thanks to everyone uh, who has uh, joined um, the Sprint to provide your thoughts. Congratulations to all of the projects, uh, regardless of uh, the recognition uh, uh, noted here. Uh, just as a logistical note, um, I will be in touch regarding the disbursement of the funds uh, after the meeting. But now I want to uh, invite Victoria to say a few closing words uh, and to wrap up the Sprint. Yeah, thanks, Jessica. So uh, your question is probably what happens after the preprint sprint. So we would like to continue to do these events uh, to continue to highlight and promote these projects. So we will send out a survey to um, ask you for, for, for feedback to help us improve future events. So we also hope to see that um, you continue to integrate feedback and feed off of this collab uh, the spirit of collaboration. And if there's anything we can do from ASAP Bio to help you make the connections or promote your work, please let us know. You can always uh, write to us and share a guest blog uh, onto ASAP Bio. And if there's any major events or launches, we'll be happy to help you spread the word and to help continue to increase the exposure of your projects. 
So uh, last um, but not least, I want to thank uh, Jessica Irache and Jigisha from ASAP Bio for helping to organize the event and running the event. And thank you to all the partners who uh, started with us and help us with the organization um, and for your input to the sprint. And thank you so much for the judges for your hard work um, behind the scenes for deciding uh, on the prizes. And of course, thank you to all of the projects who took this uh, three week journey with us and much of their time to work on your proposals and presentation. So we would like to see um, many more future developments for you and thank you everyone for attending.